morning. Good morning. As you can tell by now, I'm not past breath. So I won't be speaking Latin. I will be playing the guitar. And for the benefit of all, I won't be singing. And for the benefit of Fred, I definitely won't be rapping. I will, however, be talking about a subject everyone here knows something about. Dirt. Yes, I said dirt. It's the stuff my wife will probably spend 20% of her life cleaning up. And the stuff that occupies 20% of my son's face. The Webster Dictionary describes dirt as loose packed soil or sand, or a filthy state. I guess you know what I'm talking about. As humans, we always had a close relationship with dirt. In Genesis, God creates us out of it. Next, Adam and Eve create original sin by eating from the tree of life, and God tells Adam, Curses the ground because of you. By the sweat of your face, you will eat bread, till you return to the ground, because from it you were taken. For you are dust, and to dust you shall return. So in a sense, we are dirt, created with it, molded with it, and cursed with it. Throughout history, people have always expressed their relationship with dirt by using some common catchphrases like, old as dirt, dirt poor, common as dirt, dirt bag. <laughs> I heard this one a lot, dirt cheap, or dirt ball. We even use it in the movies. Have you ever heard of Joe Dirt? Or if you want to church it up, Joe Dirte? No one really gets a warm fuzzy inside thinking about dirt, unless maybe you're a farmer. So how does the mustard seed and dirt relate the kingdom of God to us? First, let's look at the mustard seed. As the Gospel reading states, starting with verse 31, it is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants, and puts out large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. This small, insignificant, tiny little seed, which one day will grow to become one of the most significant of all garden plants. This reminds me of what the prophet Micah spoke of Bethlehem. But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. This is just a small, tiny, unimportant little town, right? Was it then Bethlehem Jesus was referring to as a mustard seed? No. It was Jesus. Jesus himself. Jesus was and is the mustard seed. Remember how Isaiah described the Christ. He grew up before them like a young plant. Maybe a mustard tree. And like a root out of dry ground, he had no form or majesty that we should look at him. No beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and as one from whom men hid their faces. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Jesus is the seed, the tiniest, most insignificant little seed that was humbly born in Bethlehem in a manger in the form of a babe. Jesus grows from those small, humble beginnings into our Lord of Lords, our host of hosts, King of Kings, our Savior, creating Christianity as the largest worldwide religion. 
Jesus is the seed which, when planted, grows in our hearts and supports us into life eternal. He is our tree of life. In our first reading from today, Ezekiel states, Thus says the Lord God, God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel I will plant it, that it may be bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird in the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. Dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. Jesus was explaining what God sent him here to do in the parable of the mustard seed. God used his son to become our new tree of life. Life eternal through him. So if we know Jesus is the mustard seed, what or who is the dirt? If you haven't guessed yet, we are the dirt. The dirt that Jesus takes root in. We are the cursed ground. The dirt poor in spirit without Him. God makes His hollow ground. Holy through the blood of Christ. Acceptable before God's eyes. Just as the ground is separated from the sky, we are separated from God. God uses the trees to connect the ground to the sky. In turn, God uses Jesus to reconnect us to Him. Bridging the gap, Jesus stretches out His branches saying, Come to Me, all who labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take My yoke upon you and learn from Me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the kingdom of God. No one can come to the Father except through me. You're part of that kingdom. The kingdom that God established through Jesus Christ our Lord. Will you be the dirt that helps the tree grow? God is willing. Are you ready? Let us pray. Dear God, how wonderful you are to us. How merciful you are to the dirt poor in spirit. We graciously accept your gift of salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are ready, Lord, to accept your path. Give us the wisdom and strength needed to accomplish your mission. We long to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.